Now, how do you make a connection? The obvious one is the connection that I can make to my grandfather who served in Gallipoli and died in France, or Brianna can make and others in this room will make, the family-based connection. That's an obvious one. And if 90%, forgive my research, but if 90% aren't sure, we've got some work to do. Or we can make a residential connection. Some of you know about young James Martin who uh, um, died in, off Gallipoli um, at the age of 14 and nine months. And uh, he lived at 43 Mary Street on Hawthorne, not far from me. 43 Mary Street Hawthorne was a, a boarding house and he told a fib on his enlistment form and his parents signed up and said he was 18 and he died uh, at the age of 14. But that home is still there. Those who live in that home can make that connection. Those who live in a small town can connect to all of those who served from that town. You can make a residential connection. You can make a institutional connection. Schools, churches, <coughs> go to the churches, you'll find the honour boards, they're there. And you can make the connections in that way. Occupational connections, the nurses, the firefighters, the police officers, the lawyers, the architects, the labourers, the farmers. There are opportunities to make connection in that way and likewise in the multicultural groups. And uh, I met a, um, a couple at a Turkish celebration recently at Parliament, uh, at Parliament House, married couple. She was uh, of a, uh, very much a long line of, a, of Australian born, he of Turkish descent. They had, grandfathers had fought against each other. They had children. So their children had connections back on both sides. Those connections are valuable. We've been uh, dealing in recent weeks with uh, uh, a relatively well-known family in Hawthorne, next door neighbours, grew up, best buddies, young kids, best buddies, grew up, successful all over the world. Recently, two years ago, discovered that they both had great uncles who'd uh, died in the First World War, but they, then they discovered that they were on opposite sides. So they set out on a mission to introduce their two great uncles to each other. They visited both uh, graves, they visited the battle site, and they've since written, of all things, an opera. Uh, and that opera has, uh, well, they haven't written it, someone else written an opera about the story. And they've been out here uh, promoting that. That's an extraordinary set of connections as well. Uh, so there's much we can do in the way of connections. So what's the federal government doing? They have a, uh, a number of projects they've committed money to. You would have read about some of them and they will deal with all the international events. And they've got a grants project as well and they'll be marking the embarkations at Albany. Uh, and uh, Angus Houston is chairing that. And uh, I won't dwell on any of that. What's the state government doing? The shrine is being expanded, the galleries of remembrance, uh, and it's going very well. There's a commemorative place names project. You'll see some stuff in your pack about that. A book has been written about Victoria's role in the war and it will be, I think, a great contribution. Uh, there's a grants program, particularly uh, through the Veterans Council. Uh, a website's been launched, the Gallipoli Oates project, there's a, the War Memorials Upgrade project and the digitisation of records which continues. That's what the Victorian Government's committed to, it's about $45 million into that. And if I can just reflect for a moment on uh, how much money there is available across the country. I think the Centenary of Federation attracted over the course of a year close to a billion dollars. Uh, over four or five years we've got much less. So I think you just need to get that into perspective. Now, uh, I mentioned our resources and I'm not going to dwell on this because there's some information in your, your packs there about how you can make contacts and in the breaks we have a number of people. If you want to research your name, we're here to help. We'll show you how to do it. Uh, but we have resources that other countries don't. And we have our own website, the anzaccentenary.vic.gov.au. We're encouraging people to go to that and upload their stories and be part of it. And in the process, you go to that website, you can find out how to do a lot of the stuff. The National Archives records, extraordinary records, the uh, War Memorial records, you can find detailed roles of everybody who left on every ship. I'll come back to that. Mapping our Anzacs, find a family, find a place, click on a place name 
find who uh, was born or enlisted from that place. It doesn't tell you everything because it doesn't tell you somebody who, who was just living there. They might not have been born or enlisted there, but you can find a lot of information that way. Uh, and if you look at every single individual, and this is what I particularly want you to focus on because this is where uh, this working knowledge I hope will be useful. If you look at Johnny Smith from Ararat, who uh, heard from a mate that there was a bit of a blue on, uh, the recruiters came to town, they uh, enlisted. And if you're in Ararat, taking an example, then the date of birth of Johnny Smith is a significant event. The place of birth, his enlistment date and place, uh, what day he left home. And chances were they went, the boys went down to the railway station and had their photograph taken. And there's probably in the local history society photographs of the boys in their uniforms getting on the train. They're significant events. And where they lived is significant as well. And if they never came back, the home they left from is a place, and the day they departed is a place of connection. Uh, when they arrived at Broadmeadows, when they left at Port Melbourne, did they get wounded, were they killed, when they came back, they're all personal, family, local community-based dates. As significant to those people and those individuals as any of the big dates we saw before. And that's how you can connect. And if you look at the contribution, and this is just a sample, uh, some families contributed eight sons, some many seven, six, five, four, and we've just been, these are really just some that we've been dealing with. And you'll find in your communities, and the, probably the best way to find them is to go to the local war memorial and look, or into the schools, the older schools, or the churches, or the institutions, and look at those honour boards. Find the families and find uh, the names that are still represented in those communities, particularly so in country areas, and look at the dates that matter for those families and communities. Uh, it is a remarkable contribution. So what are we doing as a committee? I said we're advising the Minister and we've put the uh, website together. And one of the first things we will be doing is uh, uh, joining a commemoration of the first shot which was fired from Point Nepean, in the famous first shot of the war, first Allied well, Commonwealth-based shot of the war, fired at the faults. And by way of connection, I'll... there's a remarkable book that's been written about remarkable book in the depth of the research written by Keith Quinton from Geelong about stopping the faults, the German ship that left on day one trying to scuttle out and got stopped. Uh, the level of detail is extraordinary. And we now have, through the work we're doing with the uh, US consulates here, we now have the full passenger list of the faults. And we're going to try and find the connections uh, to those who were uh, um, obviously uh, captured and interned, many of them. And many were probably still here in, uh, through descendants. Uh, and that's an example. And we're uh, looking for the descendants, and I think there might even be some here, because we had some information about this yesterday, of those who were there when the shot was first fired. And if we can bring those people together at the first shot commemoration in August this year, we'll have made those special connections. The embarkations, we tried, as I said last year, or as a, as a literally as a trial, uh, we marked the 99th anniversary of the departure of the first convoy of the lead ship, the Orvieto. And the level of detail we have about everybody who was on every ship through the embarkation rolls is extraordinary. And we spent some time ringing Victorians at random who happened to have the same name as those who left on the Orvieto. And they were a bit shocked to get a call from me in the middle of last year. But they were actually deeply interested and many joined the 99th commemoration we had as a trial, and we will look to do that again this year. There were some 250 plus ships that left. They left and they rotated and they came back. The ship that went up to uh, the Berrima that took the boys from Williamstown came back to Melbourne in early 1915. My grandfather was on that ship, as was James Martin. Uh, and they went to Egypt and came back and rotated. There were more than 250 departures each with a parade, each with uh, uh, a lot of noise. Uh, and that's an opportunity to pick the dates that are relevant to your communities, particularly country communities, when a lot of the boys might have gone on the same ship or at the same time, because that's the way it worked. And that date can be commemorated and can be done in conjunction with local schools, and the commemorations can be run 
by those with connections and those schools and uh, obviously local governments. We uh, are very pretty keen on a, and won't go into this in a great deal of detail, uh, we very much like to put in the hands of every school child in Victoria over the course of the four or five, six years, an icon from the war, the one icon. So in 30, 40, 50 years time, Victorians will remember where they touched, not looked, un looked at under glass, not heard about, not watched on television, but actually touched an icon of the war and passed it to the boy or girl sitting next to them. Uh, with some storytelling, obviously, um, to connect it. But if we can uh, connect school children now to an icon of the war 100 years ago, then we will, I think, uh, uh, very much touch uh, the nerve and pass the torch. Uh, and uh, there'll be uh, a fair effort on commemoration project as, as VCs as well in this conference and some other exercise, particularly exercise about finding descendants. Now, just quickly, that first shot, I'm going to flash through these very quickly, uh, 5th of August, so there will be a commemorative service down there. And you'll be surprised, you might have in your community someone who's a descendant of somebody involved, and it's not hard to find out. Uh, given the information we have, you can do it in a couple of minutes. Uh, the embarkations, uh, as I said, um, again, working documents, 21st of October, the Orvieto left, 100th and the 100th anniversary this year, but 250 plus departures. And then the ships returning with the wounded, and the wounded were paraded through the streets as well, as they were welcomed back. And then the ships repatriating troops as well. So if we were fully developed uh, with this, we'd have 750, uh, up to 800 commemorative services down at Princess Pier run by local communities. Now that's unlikely to happen. There's no reason why we can't at least commemorate some of the significant departures when most bulk of the nurses went, when some particular individuals went, when particular communities went, the first convoy, the first returns, that sort of thing. That's the, uh, the first convoy and the dates they left and you can prepare that on various convoys. They all went to Albany and the Commonwealth will be marking the departures from Albany but families didn't visit Albany. Families in Victoria went down to Port Melbourne. They threw streamers at the steamers. That's where the tears were, that's where the disconnections were, and that's where we think the opportunity is to have meaningful, personal, family-based commemorations. Uh, and uh, we, will, we did the trial, and we'll be doing it again. Uh, and uh, I mentioned those, the Orvieto, very significant um, passenger list, and very great detail, and that's a typical departure. Uh, and it's extraordinary to think about. You know, we don't do that now. Prominent list of passengers that we've uncovered on the Orvieto alone, and we've even covered, uncovered footage of the Orvieto, and that's on the website. And the Orvieto played a part in the sinking of the Emden, and uh, so any descendant, anyone connected by home, descendant, institution to the Orvieto has stories that they can tell. The schools project I mentioned, that same icon through everybody's hands. If we can make that happen, we're going to trial it later this year. But if we can make it happen, I think we'll have something very lasting. And then we'll be offering our endorsement to other projects that the community come up with. And all we can do is we don't want to dictate to anybody. We want the community to do what it wants to do. But if we can lend an endorsement, and you'll hear a bit about one of those later, the Poppies project, which we've done, there are other uh, projects, and there are many that we have looked at. Uh, that's the example of the Poppies Project, the, uh, the Poppy Tile Project for uh, cemeteries, which is being run by the Crematorium Association. Uh, there are many others. Uh, how you connect, I mentioned that before. You can do it by um, family, by location, by institution. You can do it by street name. All the VC recipients are honoured uh, in the Hastings area. So there are streets with battle names, there are streets with individual names. And in every community, there are many of those. And there are opportunities with particular dates attached to involve local communities in commemorative events which engage the next generation. And uh, the VC representatives, and we have a VC naming project that we'll be doing something special with, but they're all over 
uh, Victoria, and look, you can look up in your street directories some of the, the classic names, and there are opportunities as well to make connections. And we uh, extracted some of the, uh, the names, the battle names, the personal names, and we just made ourselves a pretty uh, rudimentary list, and you'll find most of these somewhere or other in Victoria marked. And each one of them represents an event, a name, a person, a date, a family, and isolated, a little bit of research, doesn't take long, you can find a local event and an opportunity again to commemorate. Uh, and uh, soldier settlement, later part of it, don't need to go into it now, but there are opportunities, particularly obviously in country communities. So uh, all of that's uh, set out in one way or other in, uh, on our website. There are, there's no shortage of reading material, and you'll hear a bit about that later. Plenty of local communities have done their own bit of research, their own production. I mentioned the Fultz book. Uh, the community of Oakley have done a Fallen and Leaves book, which is very good, remembering all of those who, who died from the city of Oakley. Uh, and you can do similar. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, just say thank you again. And I can just remind you, if there's anything you remember about any of that, if we can make connections to the next generation in whatever way and lift their level of knowledge and their emotional experience so that in 30, 40 years' time they not only remember but they actually want to pass it on to the further generation, then we will have achieved something. Otherwise, we'll just be having exhibitions and statues and photographs, satisfying ourselves, and at the end of it, it'll all be gone. We need to be uh, smarter than that. I think the Victorian community is probably better equipped than anyone anywhere in the world to do it, and uh, I'm looking forward to being involved. Thanks very much.